The Bat Chat. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bat Chat. I am Captain Morgan. And I'm Steve Baxi. And today, Steve and I are going to talk about an episode that I have absolutely nothing to say about. <laughs> Yep, today it's off balance. Yeah, I mean, this this episode's put me off balance, Steve. I don't feel like I'm going to have anything interesting to say. No, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I don't dislike this episode. I just don't know that it, that uh, that there's a lot to to cover. I uh, guess we'll see. The comics better, I guess, is the best way to put it. Oh, I didn't know this was based on anything. Yeah. Um... Ra's al Ghul was a character that was being teased in the comics for a really long time, and so Batman had several run-ins with Talia al Ghul and stuff, and. And Dennis O'Neill was the architect of that, and so this show does kind of the same thing where Talia's teased for a little while before we get to Demon's Quest, which is also a direct adaptation. Um, and so this episode is based on a comic with Batman, and Talia's there. I don't know if Count Vertigo's there. I think he's an addition. Yeah, this is another one of those episodes that that feels like it's kind of it's kind of all atmosphere and what kinds of cool things can we do with animation pushing the envelope. Yeah, yeah. Which, to be fair, I think Count Vertigo is a cool idea visually. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is that is a thing that they're really successful at. Yeah. I wonder what Hitchcock would have thought of this episode. That's a good question. There's a Hitchcock reference in this. We'll talk about that. Oh yeah, there is. Okay, well, yeah. we'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, if you want to watch it with us, grab your DVD or uh, get online and go to Amazon Prime. <laughs> And uh, make sure that you're watching the 22nd episode of the second volume, Off Balance, and be sure to press play whenever I say now. Is everybody ready? I'm set. Here we go. Everybody, please press play right now. Count Vertigo is one of... We did a video earlier tonight on um, Arch Nemesis, and a lot of people want to say Count Vertigo is Green Arrow's Arch Nemesis, I don't really know how true that is. As much as Green Arrow, Green Arrow, as I've read, he only shows up very sporadically. I don't even think the Dark Archer is really Green Arrow's arch nemesis. Yeah, that's really interesting. Well, you know who I want it to be? I want it to be Clock King. <laughs> See, that'd be great. I think that Arrow did, actually, did a pretty good job, I think, with the reinvention of Clock King. And I also like their Count Vertigo. Both of them? I like the first one. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I like the weird vampire needle poker. I don't even know what the hell's going on with that <laughs> thing. It's awesome. Yeah, uh, and of course, the thing that would make Count Vertigo uh, Green Arrow's obvious uh, arch nemesis visually is kind of gone from that. Well, yeah. sort of. I mean, I, I guess I guess with drugs and stuff, if you could get him on that drug, then it still gives you that. But I mean, like, the, the thing that would... The, the yin to his yang there is superficially is just it's hard to shoot arrows when you have vertigo. Yeah, which I I think works better in animation or live action than it ever would in a comic. I mean, you can make that a metaphor for for the psychology of it too. Certainly. You could I I I think like the just the visual component of it though. Like, there's some really interesting things that are done in the comics with like vertigoized panels, but I think it's just something that works better when you can see and feel it. So we have an informant guy here, or I guess a guy that Batman's kind of forcing to be an informant, named Twitch, <laughs> who looks like a combination of both Sam and Twitch. That's true, that's funny. And I like how atmospheric this opening is. Oh, it cool. is atmospheric, and I guess we, we are in another Gotham City that thinks it's New York because we're at the actual Statue of Liberty. <laughs> this is the alternate universe where New York City renamed itself Gotham. <laughs> Which is um, really funny when you get into all the things in uh, Batman lore that, that that have a new Gotham. Yeah, that's true. Because then it would be, if it was New York turned to Gotham, then it would basically be New New Gotham or New New York. New New York, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I always wanted to read a science fiction story that did something like that, like New New York. There, there, New is, New there are a couple of things that do New New York. I forget is what, there? though. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. There, there's, I've, I've seen a couple of things that do that. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, so, this voice actor, um, he's actually um, a famous art teacher. The guy that plays the informant. Oh, really? Yeah, like, 
I, re I remember reading this, writing up on this somewhere at one point, but like this void actor is actually like some kind of like really famous art teacher performer that they got as a special cameo for this episode. I have no idea who he is. Okay, I personally have seen, now that I'm looking at this, I personally have seen New New York pop up in three places. One of them, oh, of course, I is Futurama, and I forgot all about that one. Oh, Futurama does that. Okay. But uh, Ray Bradbury's Martian Chronicles has a settlement on Mars called that. Oh, that's interesting. And Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep has it, too. Okay, I haven't read that book in a while. That makes sense. Okay. But I, the thing I was remembering that I that I had to go go back to to look up was was Martian Chronicles. That's where I, that's that's what I was remembering. Gotcha. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, Batman and his one of his many gas masks. <laughs> um, there's some stuff here in this episode where. I, I feel like the it's trying to be more intense than it actually is. Like when you see that when you see that face with the gas come up, I don't think, oh my god, that guy's dead. I think, God, something smells really bad. Oh really? I think the the eyes there are kind of disturbing actually. But I think maybe, oh, interesting. maybe when I was growing up, I was kind of conditioned to think that because that was that was like a uh, uh, like 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 somebody just killed themselves eyeball look like that's like the traditional look that you get when somebody kills themselves on purpose in animation that's interesting i see i never thought of it that way and here it just it just looked weird to me kind of funny um also how dumb is it for batman to just stand there in black with a target like someone could have shot him <laughs> why would you do that why that's would... not cool that's just a bad idea why would you do that I mean, I recognize that this is not the shoot. This is, he's not on the shooting side, but you're right in front of a target. If someone shoots you, it's not really their fault. I also wanted to mention in the column, Steve, of people with useless superpowers. <laughs> Talia is able to keep her hair always to one side, no matter what the weather is doing. It's it's a very magical power. She's she's very good with her hair. I think She's that like that had woman from Rambo that 2 that always has perfect hair. Must have come from the League of Assassins where like, where, like, you're able to teach yourself to be so disciplined that your hair is always on one side. Yeah. <laughs> or, excuse me, the Society of Shadows. Oh, yeah, they do change it here. It's so hard to remember what all those different things are. Yeah, League of Assassins, League of Shadows, Society, Society of Shadows. Of shadows. Like, I don't know, it's, it immediately sounds goofier when there's alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> Society of Shadows. SOS. This is something um, Bruce Tim really likes doing in his shows. Uh, characters that mess with, uh, with, with people's perceptions like this. With waves that come out of someone's hand. Yeah. Um, Shriek there's does so a little bit of that later. Much of that? Yeah, I was... Well, okay. I'm saying there's so much of it. I was thinking Shriek. Maybe there's nothing else that does it. No, there's a couple of other things here and there. Um, Shriek, there, there's some stuff with Shriek where like, I, I really like what they did with that episode in animation-wise, but there's this very conscious effort to like keep some music in there that, that always bugged me. I feel like that was the long move. Yeah, we've talked about that. I, I totally agree with you. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so so uh, Vertigo here w was a really good choice. Alternatively, uh, now again, I don't know if if uh, if he's actually in the story that you were talking about. This is based on, but like I don't think he is. I feel like that's someone else. He's a good choice. It also easily could have been Crazy Quilt, but I think they picked the right the right choice. <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, um, a, a lot jump. of what Dennis O'Neill did with Ra's al Ghul was before Roz was in charge. So there are a couple of characters, particularly like the sensei and stuff, that that um take that happen that are included in that story and set up like the League of the League of Assassins like hierarchy. And then all of that just gets removed from this episode because it's not trying to do that. This guy looks like he's right out of what was that what was that thing? Defenders of the Universe, is that what it is? Defenders of the Universe. Oh, maybe. Um, he's, he's got he's got a costume that looks a lot like a guy from that. A little bit, yeah. Um, Vertigo 
is really interesting in the comics, and I wish we would just adapt him like we do. I wish we would just make him DC's Doctor Doom, because that's what he is. Oh. Like, I don't know that I've ever read one comic with that character. He's well, not... okay, I have more recently because of Cur- because of like recent Green Arrow, but previously I never had. Um, he shows up in the middle of Ostranger's Suicide Squad, and they do this amazing thing where he's a manic depressant, and so he he uses Poison Ivy uses him to like take control of his country, and like there's this weird thing where the chemical reaction from her flowers cures his manic depression uh cures like his manic depression chemically but because his body is so used to flipping between happy and sad he he can't get back to it like he can't he, the healing doesn't take and so he asks deadshot to kill him um if he asks and there's a really interesting thing done paralleling those two characters and i wish we got more of that somewhere look at how bold the black is around the bat symbol there yeah, <laughs> I'm just obsessed with that. I like it. I like it that way. Actually, they should they, they should have done it that way more often. So, uh, Alfred, that is no way to dust a giant penny. <laughs> the ladder Why in would one Alfred spot. Even bother? Well, it had a giant particle on on Lincoln's nose. <laughs> I don't know why he was constantly rubbing one part of it. I could have seen him climbing the ladder to get that one thing because it's visible from the ground. I like how this castle is shot from from below like it's Wayne Manor. <laughs> or like, like it, just, it looks kind of similar to that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, meanwhile, at Wayne... Oh, wait! No, nope, that's not what that is. <laughs> Um, there's a globetrotting in this episode, which I like. Yeah. Um, I like Globetrotter Batman. Yeah, it, it, it distinctly has a different flavor than the show usually does for that. Um, yeah. It's also cool to include a character as set up for a future episode when this show is usually one and done. Yeah. Um, that's a really cool gimmick. I had, I don't understand why there was never, like, a VHS collection of the Ra's al Ghul episodes. They could have easily gotten away with that. At the very least, I don't know why you wouldn't have put that out around Begins. Oh, yeah. Like, once people were more familiar with that character. Because I feel like he seemed, when I was a kid, to be a really minor villain, even though he popped up as much or more than major villains. Yeah. And, like, obviously at this point, we, we, would, we would consider him a major villain. He kind of dominated all of the rest of Batman's that's a great for a while. jump oh my god I love that oh yeah that's the, fantastic. The, the silhouette there the way the, the sorry the, the, the way the, the way the moon is shining on that you see the outline of his body oh yeah it's great um, it's also the same studio that did the previous episode this is also sunrise I gotta give him mad props for that that looks awesome oh yeah it's great okay so oh. his losing his belt here is the most preposterous thing <laughs> hey, like, can, I'm sorry can I talk about that for a minute because it's yeah, yeah, so dumb he loses his belt. Now look, where is it? Where is it? I don't know. It's not on the ground anywhere. With a bird's eye view, it's not on the ground. Batman is going to go through the rest of this scene and get locked up and not realize he's missing his belt and that it was cut off with a knife until he reaches for it to do something. It's ridiculous. That's a good point. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Why do we fall, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the obvious thing to say there, but I laugh because I was saying it as he's face down. <laughs> um, so I really like, um, I think her name, I, I think this is Helen Slater as Talia. Really? Yeah. Like, um, Supergirl Helen Slater? Yeah, yeah. Is that who we're talking about? Oh, that's really cool! Yeah, um, I do think she's cool. Doing an accent! I can't hear her, what'd you say? I do it an accent! Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. I think she really works for this. It's hard to tell that it's her. Wow, I, did, I didn't know that. You yeah, know, I, cool. I, I listen to her, and I watch her interact with Bruce here, and I'm like, why didn't we just make Talia, why didn't we just make Red Claw Talia? That's a really good point. I don't remember what the aversion to that was initially. I mean, I'm totally cool with making up new villains. Uh, obviously, 
you know, this show created a couple that have stuck around and that we're glad we have. But Red Claw was kind of nothing. Red Claw was all, that was also those episodes uh, show ran by the woman that did Captain Planet, so it was also really bad PS, PSA material PSA stuff. Yeah, really pandering. Um, so like so much of the of Red Claw being there, I think is just like them trying. I, I guess almost like saving Talia from turning into Red Claw because I can't imagine like having that episode written that way, but it's just Talia. Yeah, that's a really good point. I. Uh... I, I actually I actually like her fake accent. I mean, it helps that, you know, she's from a not real place. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things Neil Adams talks about, where, like, it is a very conscious decision to make sure that both Roz and Talia look like they're of some Asian country, but you can't pin it down at all. And so to do the accents in the show to, like, to work with that, I think, is a really good idea. What's funny, though, of course, is that she she's doing this kind of like ethnically ambiguous accent, and his is just British. Yeah, because <laughs> it's Which David can, like, Warner, and he's just talking like David Warner. Like it's a little deeper. It's sinister. I, I, I like he's not really modulating it, but his voice is great for that. But like, oh, uh, by the way, I still don't think Batman's figured out that he doesn't have his 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 belt unless we talked over it. Maybe we talked over it. Maybe. Cause then, yeah, because Talia picks the lock instead of him. Oh yeah, that's what it is. He's like, yeah. he's like, we need a hairpin. Why? How in the world could you possibly have a belt like that that could that easily be cut through with a knife? I feel like there's an episode that talks about Batman's belt not being like like being very consciously made so things like that don't happen. Yet it happens. <laughs> You only can get away with that when you're like, when you do the 60s Batman thing where you're like, take off your belt! <laughs> or you render him unconscious and then you come get it. But see, you can never get away with that anymore now, Steve, with, with how advanced technology has gotten. No one yeah. would ever buy that Batman in this day and age wouldn't have some kind of security protection where if you tried to touch it, you would get electrocuted or something. That happens in Justice League, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, that makes it funnier because it's the same continuity. I guess he learned from this. He was like, oh, I should probably come up with a sturdier belt. It's fun to see Batman grow into what he becomes in Justice League, which is like how much more serious he is and how much more, like, he doesn't make a single mistake in Justice League the way he does here. So there's there's a shot of that gun that made it look more like a sewing machine. <laughs> Vertigo, is that a gun or a sewing machine? Some of this um, perspective shifting thing is cool, and then some of it's also kind of dated and limited by the animation. Like, I think this slow turn is cool, but then, like, some of the just, like, turning upside down and stuff is kind of cliche. Somebody really should say follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> There's an episode of... Well, there's just Batman. nothing on the circle! <laughs> it's just a tiny circle! <laughs> There's an episode of The Batman where um, Green Arrow and Count Vertigo show up, and there's it's a whole thing about like um, Count Vertigo using Wayne Enterprises to like um, contaminate water supplies and hurting kids and stuff. It's actually a pretty cool. I episode. didn't know he was in that. Yeah, um, the last season of of The Batman basically just turns into Brave and the Bold. I'm gonna be so surprised by characters that show up in that show. I bet. Oh yeah. Um, the Batman is is widely underrated. I really like what it does. A lot of like subverting this formula and also bleeding into what Brave and the Bold would become. Yeah, let's not fall down into another giant well looking <laughs> you know, pit. Let's not let's not do that. Wow, so many pits shaped like that in Batman things. I I guess it's you know, I guess that's a proper thing though, Steve, since we're dealing with the League of Assassins. Yeah. <laughs> Or the Society of Shadows. Can they not say assassin on TV? I don't know. That's a really good question. I mean, like, this is a show that's not afraid of death and kill, like other shows I mean, Fox we use were. guns all over the place. Can we not say assassin? Can I say assassin? Well, but, but, I mean, like, you can't, you can't chalk that up to censorship with Batman Begins. No, that's true. Well, I, well, Nolan talks about how, like, Bruce Wayne would never consciously join something called the League of Assassins. Did you notice that, that door behind them when they walk in here, it, it looks like it leads to a kitchen at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So This whole manor castle thing looks kind of empty. Like, it's just not detailed very well. Yeah, that's a good point. It, look, it looks like Batman's playing a level of Castlevania. 
Yeah, this kind of looks like this is perfect for a, for a Batman video game. I wish we did that. I don't know if we've ever adapted this level for that, but you should. Totally should. Now, to be fair, though, we've done plenty of bell towers and things in Batman video games. That's true. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, like, we are we are uh, hearkening back, whether it's intentionally or not, to Batman 2 by 89 hard right now. Especially because not only are we in a bell tower, but here comes a helicopter. <laughs> and Vertigo's going to try to leave. But Batman's yep. going to try to make that impossible. But this is... But, but this is I uh, I uh, like 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 going way farther than eighty nine. Like we've we've really uh, built up from there because we've got like six bells, <laughs> and this time Batman has to go up a spiraling staircase. It's so more disorienting that way. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good. That's a really good point. I wonder if this there's is also been a tower built like this, but there's a spiraling staircase going all the way up like that with a circular. Like that's that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, um, it's perfect for his power set. Um, but this, he's gonna fall off this tower pretty soon. That's what we're gonna get the the Hitchcock Vertigo reference. Yeah. Um, I don't remember in the comics whether Count Vertigo ever gets powers or if it's always just like an eyepiece. I think it's usually just an eyepiece. I, I think it'd be funny if Count Vertigo was actually missing an eye there, and it was one of those rare points, one of those rare cases where somebody has an eye patch, but it's a practical eye patch. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'm not sure if we've ever done that. I I think Captain Vertigo's whole thing is that, like, he's got, like, a case of Vertigo, and then he, he puts the patch on to correct it, and through there he's able to, like, transmit it. But I'm not sure exactly what the origin deal is. Oh, that's cool, because he has no motivation in this. Yeah, no, he's just weird, bland villain. <laughs> With a weird, villain we've heard of. <laughs> with a weird planned costume that <laughs> that looks like like the like the most like nineteen thirties uh, uh like adventure serial villain costume ever, right? Like it feels like he should be a Nazi, right? Yes, that's what. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep trying to decide what exactly it's like. It's like yeah, evil it seems Errol like he's Flynn, to be pulp villain Indiana Jones fighting Nazi. Yeah, or evil Errol Flynn. Or evil Errol Flynn, exactly. <laughs> if you could retroly ca if you could retroactively cast Errol Flynn as any character, I would love if he would if he eventually ever became Green Arrow. That would have been so cool. Well, yeah, I mean that's you know, naturally, but really anybody that could play Robin Hood could also play Green Arrow. For the most part, well, Russell Crowe couldn't. Russell Crowe was a bad choice for for Robin yeah, Hood. But, but but you're proving my point for me because you're saying he was a bad choice for Robin Hood. Like anybody that was a good choice for Robin Hood. No, that's true. Okay, yeah. I'm not I, saying that I didn't play it, I'm saying that should play it. So, so, was there anybody that didn't see that double cross coming? I'm sure everyone figured that Even out at that point. Even if you don't know who Talia is, I think that double cross is pretty obvious. It is. Because um, there's so much of like just her being shadowy in the background of this episode. Well, um, okay, there's that, but even if you didn't have that, in, at this period in, uh, in, in entertainment and in cartoons specifically, she would not, you would not have this like this, like, ethnic chick with a really cool accent that turns out to be a good guy. Yeah, just, she's very not, Bond villain. It's not gonna happen. I love her costume. Oh, yeah. Um, I also, I, I love we get Ra's al Ghul for a little, for a minute here. I like that Bruce knows he's going to, that, that Bruce knows that she's gonna double-cross him. Um, some of the stuff with, with Talia works better retroactively when we get some more, like, the Demon's Quest stuff. Yeah, this is some fun spy stuff. Yeah, which is exactly what Dennis O'Neill was doing. Dennis O'Neill turned Batman more into like a globe-trotting book for a while there, and then he brought that James Bond flavor to Iron Man when he moved over to Marvel. And it's cool that this show wasn't afraid of being that and the street level stuff and and some other things here and there. Like like it's not always balanced well, but uh, I think it, I think it does a decent job of it. It kind of helps that it's also a pretty episodic one and done show. Yeah, like it's not a great episode. It's just kind of fun. I feel like it's it's the better it's the better just fun episodes. No, you're right. I mean, I think I enjoyed it a lot more watching it with you, Steve. Um, oh yeah, me too. Um, it's boring to just watch by yourself. It is something that talking over is more enjoyable. I mean, I made fun of a lot of little things, but I like it. Yeah, I agree. I I, I don't think it's bad. Um, there's it is a setup there, episode. I mean, like if they never brought Razagul in after that, if they were just like, eh, I guess we don't want to do that after all. Like then then it would be harder to appreciate it. Yeah, and if I if I read the comic somewhat recently, I probably would like it less just because I remember liking the comic. But um, I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, that was fun. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I did that with you, because I liked it a lot more this time. Yeah, no, it, it was fun. Um, it'd be fun at the end of this t- end of this whole journey of, of Batman anime series episodes to go back and make a, a top ten, because I feel like it'd be very different. I don't know if my top ten would ultimately be different than it was, but, may- but maybe so. Especially because I know there are some episodes here and there that I actually had not seen when I made that list. Oh, interesting. Okay, then I, I don't... Just, do you have any additions? I, I hate admitting that. I don't do them like that anymore. I always I always binge watch a whole show now before I do a top ten, but I didn't do that back then. I thought I knew the show well enough, and I guess right. I was a little bit arrogant because now I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, there are episodes I've never seen. What was I doing? What was I doing? <laughs> It's one of those shows, though, where I feel like there's so many episodes you can almost get away with that. Yeah, but, you know, I still shouldn't have yeah. done that. Anyway, everybody, thanks so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Steve, appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is always fun. We will see you again next week when we'll talk about... Th- speaking of top ten episodes, one of my very favorites <laughs> and one that I put... that I, I bet Steve would not put on his top ten, but it's one of my favorites. The Man Who Killed Batman with the great Matt Frewer. <laughs> no, this is a fun episode. It, it, you're right, it ultimately wouldn't be on my top ten, but I like it a lot. Yeah, but like, like being right all the time is not a prerequisite of being on my channel, Steve. <laughs> Everybody, thanks again for listening. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Steve Baxi. We'll see you again next week.